Housing is elemental, you know, it's essential. Everybody needs it. We have a lot of space in Detroit and yet we are constantly dealing with lots of housing issues. And so UCHC has been on the forefront of that for many decades in terms of representing people who are at risk of losing their housing. Um, and they're flexible, you know, whether it's tenant organizing or fighting for affordable housing credits or de defending against foreclosures. So if, I believe it's since 2003 that UCHC has done work on tax foreclosures. It's anywhere from just counseling and basic information to helping people who live in homes that are in foreclosure in the auction to purchase the home they already live in. And so we've helped about 3,000 people purchase their homes and become homeowners, mostly through the tax foreclosure auction over the years. We see it as taking a negative thing, um, you know, foreclosure can be harmful to a neighborhood, turning into a positive. And so the ACLU has been uh, a couple of years running in their lawsuit against the city of Detroit, and they saw our program as an outlet, as an opportunity to um, bypass the auction and to take advantage of something that was already in place to help settle the lawsuit. The city was willing as well. This is an opportunity we have, the partners are in place, and uh, we were able to help 80 families last year to buy their homes before they went up for auction. And just like every year, we also tried to help people whose homes were in the auction. And uh, in many cases, we failed because the bidding is competitive. There is no priority in the auction for someone who lives in the home. Um, so it's just the highest bidder wins, period. So we experienced a lot of losses and that's part of why we've been so um, hopeful about this right of refusal process to actually prioritize the resident and create home ownership. Last year it was only non-owners who could be in our right of refusal program. This year it also includes low-income homeowners and those low-income homeowners are um, benefiting from the settlement because they're going to be able to get their house back for a thousand dollars. So I, I would say that the ACLU kind of used the existing program and the existing um, mechanisms that were in place with the city and UCHC and others to, to find a resolution. The Homeowner Property Tax Assistance Program, also known as the Poverty Exemption, and that was the basis for the ACLU lawsuit. They claimed that people were getting foreclosed upon for taxes that they should not have had to pay if they had been able to take advantage of the poverty exemption, which is um, made available under state law. And so rather than retroactively granting exemptions or taking away taxes that have already been levied, for people who are in foreclosure, they're gonna be able to get their houses back in this way. We also recommend the poverty exemption for people who are low-income homeowners. And so we'll continue to do that. We're also going to be seeing improvements in the poverty tax exemption application to make it easier for people to fill out, less of a burden for organizations like ours. That was also part of the settlement, so we're looking forward to that. We need more organizations who can help people to fill these out. Um, we fill out a lot here in our office and we're happy to do it. It's something that I call radical paperwork. You know, these little papers can save someone's home. You know, it's really powerful. But there needs to be more organizations out there that do it and we've really seen an improvement in that regard over the past year. And other people getting trained on it, understanding it, telling people, uh, telling homeowners about it. So I think that the conversation has been started and we just need to back it up with partners who can actually help people to get access to it, and, and we're seeing that happen. Not a single law has changed to make this program possible. What has changed is the willingness and the, and the capacity of all the partners. So we've had about three years now a tax foreclosure roundtable group convened by the mayor's office and Vicki Kovari heads that up, and that has been a great opportunity for us to continue to hash out these issues and know each other on a first name basis and have candid conversations about where people are falling through the cracks. And I think that that has a lot to do with how we were able to get to the place we're in now where we um, we're come to the city and say, these are the properties we wanna purchase. They trust us to do that. They go to the county, um, the county treasurer's office is willing to participate. They do certain things that they don't have to do, like extending deadlines, you know. So that, that all requires us to trust and work together. And um, it's really cool to see what's possible when we do.